Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show, and guess what? They're back! Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast! Welcome to BJ and Bill the podcast, a part of the podcast playground. Please give us that five-star review. Subscribe on Apple, Spotify, wherever you do your podcasting. And follow us on Facebook, BJ and Bill, the podcast, as we welcome you all the way up to episode 99. Wow, 99. And we were just talking just before we started the recording, all the 99 references there are, out there, like Agent 99 from Get Smart, my favorite. And- 99 luff balloons which is luff balloons yeah which is red balloons and i i don't know why it's it's confusing they they sing it both ways well the original i think the original song was in german and it and they tra- well wait a minute then they translated it to english or did she do it in english first because if it rhymes in english it's not going to rhyme in another language and as I listened to it, it rhymes in English, but it doesn't rhyme in German. So she must have done it. Wasn't that Florence and the Machine? Wasn't that who? Boy, set the oh, way back. Now, oh, way to go. Now yeah. I'm going to make you look it up. Yeah, I, I I forget who it is now. I might actually, when I go back and edit this podcast, I might actually go back and put in a split second of it because we can get away with like 30 seconds without getting into trouble with the copyright cops. So anyway, the- 90, 99 Luft Balloons, yes. And when was it? Wasn't there an album in 99, 99, 99? Was that or was it nine? Nine? No, nine. no, I think 90. I think you're right, but I thought it was like the end of a Beatles song, but I'm not sure about yeah, that. Yeah, something to do with the Beatles. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't remember. Okay. So anyway, here we are at episode 99, which is almost, but not quite a major milestone. <laughs> triple digits tune in next week for episode 100 we have no idea what we're going to do to mark the occasion probably nothing but it's, we, it's we have no good. idea what we're going to do on number 99 right why should, we probably why should we know what we're going to do on 100? <laughs> we should probably know what the heck we're doing today first which good luck with that all right so anyway so how you doing i'm not doing too bad i I have a gripe, but I, you know, I think I'm the only one that cares about this. So I don't even know if I should spill it out into the world of. Well, you've already of, brought it up now, so there's no stopping it now. So go ahead. You got a gripe. So of course, yesterday there was a, a major news story. Okay. We'll just you leave think? it at that. We're recording this on a Monday. Yes. And so the last Sunday, there was a major news story going on. Yes, there you was. You know me, Mr. NASCAR. Oh, I didn't even think of that. So your NASCAR coverage got interrupted for real news. Is that what you're saying? Well, let let me explain it. Let, let me explain to you. If I can. Explain. <laughs> so Let's it's see. on NBC, the network. The race, the race you were hoping to watch. Yes. Gotcha. So I'm there, and all of a sudden, breaking news. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Breaking news. Joe Biden has, you know, right. dropped out of the race. Yes. I'm going, son of a bitch. Not because I was angry about, you know, politics dropping out of the race. No. My race is being interrupted. Damn it. <laughs> I go, ah, I know what I'll do. Yes. Let me go try USA Network because whenever it's not on NBC, I go to USA Network, and the race is there. Okay, good thinking. So I jump over to USA Network. What all did of you a find? Sudden, all of a sudden, they're in the middle of, um, I don't know, some police show. And zap, it goes out, and it goes to the race. Sweet. Yeah, so I go, all right. So we go about 20 minutes into it. I'm settled into my easy chair. I got a drink in hand. I'm snacks i'm ready for my race zap to the police show i'm going what the oh they must have went back to nbc so again i switch it over to nbc and there they are again on nbc 
So what well, my gripe is, and see now when Fox has it, sometimes it's on Fox one, sometimes it's on Fox two, right? Sometimes it's on Fox the network, you know, the regular local Fox station. Yeah, you're talking about a race. Yeah, yeah. If the NFL can do it, so can NASCAR. They need like you know Sunday ticket. Or race fans, where I'm, you get every race, yeah, every I'm Sunday. I'm kind of surprised they don't have that at the same time in the same place. Yeah, you know, instead of having to go right. like twenty different places to know, and it's even going to get worse next year because they're going to give it to three different networks next year. So you're saying that the that NASCAR does not have the equivalent. Of like a, 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 a an NFL Sunday pass or the Major League Baseball all access ticket or whatever they call that with baseball, they don't have that. Nope. We'll get and them on the did, phone. We'll get, they, get, get call Daytona and get on the phone. If they did, I would have it. I'm sure you would, because I'm tired of scurrying around. You know, and they've done this. Like I said, even with Fox, you know, they they all do it. Sure. Like we're we're going to go back to Fox regular programming because we've had a two hour rain delay, but you can catch it on Fox Sports too. It's like oh, and then you got just put it on one app channel and be done with it. I think that's a great idea. I oh, can't they, imagine oh, why they haven't thought of that. Oh, like I said, they probably enjoy getting the money from the different you know networks, but they're just screwing it up. I understand, but even. Like you said, even even NFL Sunday Ticket has all the games everywhere all the time. Now, of course, if you're in a local market, you're still not going to get the blacked out games, which is stupid because most games are sold out anyway. But I get it. Okay, fine. Like like if if the Jaguars are home, and if I had NFL Sunday Ticket, I wouldn't get the Jaguars game in Jacksonville. Even if I had NFL Sunday ticket, of course, you know, Jacksonville, I mean, half their games are in London anyway. So, <laughs> so but yeah, so, okay, I get it. So, wow. Interesting. I, I, I think you need to find the suggestion box somewhere and stuff it full of ballots for, let's not talk about ballot stuffing just yet. Let's, let's say <laughs> that it might be a good suggestion. <laughs> well, I got on X and let my political uh, views be known to NASCAR. Good. Good. Oh, wait. Oh, that wasn't polit it was another race. I'm sorry. It's it a different race. You let your views be known to NASCAR in one form yeah. or another. That's yeah, it basically That's said this sucks. Every week you got to go from this station to that station to find what station you're on. Right. Just put it on your own app and be done with it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely positively. I'm I can't believe that they haven't already done that. Like I said, and I've said it once, I'll say it again. So maybe you just need to you know, stir up the stir up the hornet's nest a little bit and get somebody to take some action. So good luck. And with next that. year, good some luck. of the races are going, which I have, right? But it's going to be on Prime, on Amazon Prime. You know, here's a. I was worried. Amazon Prime, you're talking about, and so I was worried when I canceled because I can't. I put my YouTube TV subscription on three month hiatus, so I could, you know save the 80 bucks a month and whatever cuz i don't i watch zero regular tv and if i did i've got broadcast channels and i've got roku tv and pluto t all that stuff and i thought okay i'm not missing the local sports a little baseball game now and then would be nice or 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 an or a wnba game you know you and i are following some of that and by gosh amazon prime has both not a ton, but there's probably two nights a week where they've got a baseball game and there's a two nights a week where they've got a WNBA game or something in prime time. And that's cool. I'm totally on board with that. So I'm hats off Amazon Prime. I'm watching you a lot more. Congratulations, because you got a little bit of live sports in there. So good of course, for you. I know you won't be watching uh, next year, but yes, and next year, I think they're going to have five different races uh, in NASCAR. I, you know, I'll probably... Put one on somewhere, somehow. I mean, just, I, it, it's kind of like the reason, and I'm, I'm getting ready, getting ready. I'm fixing to dump Sirius XM radio as well, because I mean, nobody's in their car as much anymore. And as the, well, I shouldn't say that some people are, some aren't, 
but I liked to have to be able to listen to a live voice. Well, you and I, radio guys, you know, I could listen to my Apple Music or my Spotify in the car, but occasionally I liked listening to a live voice, a DJ. Wow, imagine that. And now that I'm listening to podcasts and stuff in my car, it's like I'm kind of over that as well. So I'm thinking Sirius XM is the next one to get the boot from well, yours truly. Of course, I you know know the people because most of them were there when I was working there uh, part time. But as I said, the Central Florida station WPCV, which I worked for for a while, right? Plus, I like country music anyway, and they have live announcers. Believe it or not, someone is actually in the building pushing the buttons and talking to me from like, you know, 5 a.m. in the morning until, you know, right. 8 o'clock on Sunday and usually like uh, 10 right. or 11 o'clock on the weekdays. You know, I Perfect. know that there's a live body in there talking to me. Nice. I like unless that. There, I do. Unless, unless there's a big meeting or something, they might yeah. voice track for an hour or something. But can I uh, can I get that? Can I get I can't get that in Gainesville, can I? Uh well, you might be able to try it. 97.5. 97.5. Yep, WPCV. I'll look, I'll look it up. And and we have a couple of local stations here in Gainesville. Um, I haven't given them a lot of listening time, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. So we'll see how it goes. You know. So there you go. There you go. There's our live broadcast coverage for the day, folks. <laughs> Plus, hey. of course, like we said, there was a little bit of political news over the weekend while we were away. And that thing has got me a little upset, too. Upset? Well, the other side, we're going, wah, 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 wah. Joe Biden's old. old, old he needs to go. He needs... And now that he's left, now they're going, wah, 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 this is unfair. Wah, you can't just, it's like, make up your mind. Either you don't want him to run or you want him to run. It's worry about your own damn party. Right. Don't worry about somebody else's party. Right. You know, it's like, oh, it's just, I get it. I do. And I think the lesson, no lesson, maybe not the right word, but the lesson in all of this has been, we have been shown once and for all, that it has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with winning. <laughs> <laughs> winning is all that matters. And it doesn't matter if we put, uh, you know, a Great Dane up against somebody. If he could win, he would be your nominee. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you know winning. what excites me, but I still don't think it, I, I, I still think uh, the Democrats, the you know, with what I heard yesterday, sounds like. They're pretty much going in one direction. I don't think they're going to waver from who they're kind of leaning towards. Oh, right, right. I, I I don't think. But, you know, I remember as a child, my dad was, you know, into politics. And he would watch the conventions. Right. And I remember as a child watching conventions with my dad, not because I wanted to, just because, you know, back in those was days. watching. You had one television and, you know, whatever dad or mom was watching. And there was, it was one Saturday television morning. in the house. Yeah. So unless it was Saturday morning cartoons, you were stuck with whatever they were watching. Yes. And I, and I remember there was a couple times when you would watch the convention, there was not a nominee going into the convention. That's correct. They would go one round of votes. And if somebody didn't get the majority, then... You know, somebody could pledge their, pledge their, you know, and, sure. and then the delegates had could make up their mind no matter what they wanted to do. You know, deals were made. Yes. Yes. And and I remember as a kid, those not that I was that intelligent in politics or nor am I today either, but it was exciting. You know, the, now the conventions, all they are is basically, you know, the networks join them for like an hour or two in, an evening. Right. And all they are is uh Right. It's a pitch fest. It's an infomercial. It's yeah, an it's infomercial. An infomercial. Yeah, yeah, it's a political infomercial. That's all it is. Yes. And so I like that it might actually become a real live convention. Although, and like I said, I, I think it's leaning that it won't. I think so. But it would be but, exciting to go back to the old days of... And where know, was... 
And where was the most exciting, some might say dangerous, uh, Democratic convention of all time? 1968. Chicago. Chicago. Yep. Where is this year's? Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a little bit of, uh, maybe a little, you know, a little throwback. I, it, you're right. It, it's going to get some more eyeballs. It's going to get some more attention than it might otherwise not have gotten. Because like you said, it's like we both said, it's an infomercial. It's crazy, crazy, you know. Um, so, yeah, it could be interesting. It's going to be interesting no matter what. Even if our current vice president <clears throat> becomes the nominee, which it looks like she will, it's going to be super, super interesting. Who does she pick for a vice president? You know, now is she going to debate Donald? Is it? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting <laughs> and crazy. So, hey, you know, buckle up, get your adult beverages and your snacks because it's going to be interesting. Well, I, 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 I do rem remember watching a little news last night. No, oh, watching news. Wow. I know, which I hardly ever do, but I go, no. this is kind of interesting. Right. But but I liked the one commentary's words that came out of their mouth. For the last, since, you know, Donald Trump ran for president the first time. Right. It was kind of like, you know, she didn't use this wording. This is going to be BJ's wording. Okay. But it, it's kind of like the same thing she was saying. If you're a Big Brother fan, uh, which is like a, a reality show. Right. Julie Chen Moonbez always says, expect the unexpected. Right. Well, basically, the news person said, I'm almost to the point where I expect anything. Nothing surprises me anymore. Right. And so I think we're at that point where it's really, you know, you, it's it's hard to surprise us anymore because, well, <laughs> that's just business as usual in Washington. I, it's, yeah, I'm... It, you know, I didn't, I, I think I watched a half hour, you know, the, the Republican convention was on last week as we record this for like four nights or whatever it was. Um, and of course I, I watched a tiny tidbit of every night and then I watched some, not nearly half, not even half of Trump's speech. Cause I knew it was going to be long and rambling and it fulfilled all those predictions. <laughs> I did watch the first half hour where he told his story of what happened in the assassination attempt. And I was like, wow, this guy is quiet, reserved, almost, almost humble about it. Not quite, but it was, I, I think somebody got to him and said, look, you want to, you want to make an impression? Here's a good way to do it. And I think he, I don't know if he took some good advice or if he had actually had that thought himself. I don't know. It was good. And then he went off the deep end as he always does. And I didn't stick around for the whole thing. So I was out of there, but I was at least impressed a little bit to see the first piece of it, of how it came up. Now, what happens from here? I'm sure he goes right back to default mode, which is again, wild and crazy. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, I know how we, we all know how he works and okay. Now there's a different, you know, a, the, the, the Democrats are going to put somebody up differently, a different person. And now it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. That's all we can say. It's going to be interesting. And the fight's going to be, I think this is going to be the next fight uh, between the two major parties, which God, it'd be so nice if a third party could just come in and, <laughs> you know, surprise everybody. Right. But nonetheless, it's going to be now there, the, the, the party, I'm just going to call them party A and party B. Party A is going to do everything they can now to keep party B off the ballot in every state. Watch yeah. that. That'll be the big battle right there. Yeah. But you know yeah. what? Their convention's not over. That's where you're supposed to decide. If you, you know, maybe if you're a young and you think, okay, they always do that at the convention, you know, and then they, right. they you know, they, they will, you know, they have the big party and they, and then, and then they have the infirmary. Well, people, 
Back in the old days, they didn't do it that way. And it's kind of for an old guy like me, it's exciting to think they might go back to that. Right. Right. At least this time around. So we'll see. So no matter what your politics are, don't, don't forget, we love you. We welcome you here on this program. And we don't really talk about it all that much. And we're trying not to now, but it's kind of been a big week of crazy news out there. So, <laughs> so we kind of have to give it a little bit of a nod. But, you know, we'll we'll get back to the regular BJ yeah. and Bill stupid We now stuff. return to now We now return again. to your regular program. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Stay you tuned. Know, I, wish, I wish these politicians would at least go look at the TV guide and see what's on before they make major announcements. Like, well, got the race car race until about 4 o'clock. I guess I'll wait till <laughs> like 4.35 o'clock, then I'll make this announcement. No, I'm going to make it right as the new NASCAR race starts on NBC. Sons of the bitches. <laughs> and of course, that's that's NASCAR. So somebody somewhere had to make a decision. I mean, you know, can you imagine? Can you imagine if something like that happened during a Super Bowl or something like that? If 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 I'm running the Super Bowl, I'm like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell, I don't care if the Martians land on the White House lawn. <laughs> we are playing this football game. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. At least at least NASCAR, there's only a few Bubba's like me, you know, that, you know, right. are, are, are there almost every week and, you know, live and die by the sport, you know. But there's a lot more football people that live and die by Sunday than there are that live and buy live and die by the race car races. There's a lot more Sunday. money to be made. It's all it's all about the money, BJ. It's always always all about the money yeah. and it doesn't matter if it's nascar or football or politics it's always about the money that's all the, that's it that's it and that's where we're at i mean it's not it's not horrible yes it's horrible but it's where we're at it's what we made for ourselves in this country congratulations everybody it's always about the money great yeah <sighs> And I don't have Nancy, any of it. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi's salary is one hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars a year with salary and benefits. In her years, in her ten years or whatever of being a, a, a representative from California, her net worth has gone from almost nothing to a quarter of a billion dollars. Really? How'd that work out? That must have been magic. I don't know. That must. Have I don't know how that works. Lawn or something to produce more money. Anyway. So, all right, don't get me started on that. But I see we're already started on that. So, anyway. <laughs> all right, we've pretty much wasted the first half hour of this program talking about po Normally, we talk about important things like NASCAR and Caitlin yeah. Clark and other stuff like that. But, no, today we're kind of just skirting around that, having to talk about stupid stuff like politics. And I don't know how I missed it, but I did. I did too. I did the too. All, the the All-Star game, the 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 WNBA's All-Star game. I missed it. I watched I remember watching a, the la, one of the, the last game cuz they said this is the last WNBA game before the Olympic break. And I'm like, "Oh, okay." And then, yes, then they played the All-Star game and I'm like, "What the hell?" They should I have told watched. us about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, even know anyway. what channel, or, you know, what ne network it was on. Oh, I, I saw it on, I saw it on Twitter. I saw, I mean, that's kind of my new, which Elon will tell you is absolutely what he has in mind. X Twitter is now my news source is now where I get my news. It absolutely is. So that's where I saw Caitlin Clark and, 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 you know, and, and, uh, Angel Reese and all of that, you know, it's like, holy cow. Okay, great. That, we that is a, that, that, that is a, a, those two names you just. Caitlin named, Clark, Angel Reese. That, that is the WNBA right now. And that's all eyes are on those two. Yeah. Kind of I mean, not all of them, but you know. They, if you're, yeah. If you're in the WNBA, if you are anywhere associated with the WNBA, a player, a team, a coach, an owner, you're, you're sending those girls Sorry, I mean, I don't want to be sexist, but they're ladies. You're sending those ladies a million-dollar Amazon gift card. I don't know. You're doing something for them <laughs> because they have the, – two ladies have single hand, – double-handedly taken your league, which has been around for 20 years, 20 years. And I would challenge anybody to name a team in the WNBA before this year. 
And now it's gone from zero to hero because of two ladies who have come out and made that big of a splash. So if you're in the WNBA now, you can't thank those ladies enough. <laughs> you're now, like, <laughs> now, do you think now that this has happened, that women's college basketball will become more exciting? And so more superstars will join the WNBA? Or do you think this is a, yeah. a flash in the pan? No, I think, I mean, you're right. We had a very unusual situation this year in that we had Clark, Reese, and some others. I don't want to say that, but they were the ones that got the majority of the headlines and made such a splash. And even, even our man Shaq said when Final Four time came around, I'm not watching the men, I'm watching the ladies. That's the better game. You know, I don't know if he was trying to just make headlines or, you know, he's buddies with Angel Reese. I get it. So, you know, he Shaq says whatever he wants to say to make a splash. I get it. But he's kind of right. The ladies tournament was super exciting, super competitive and all of that. Will it continue that way? I don't know. And They're going to have to find some more amazing talent or let it come up through the ranks, bubble up. And hopefully, yes, now hopefully more girls who might have just played the game and then gone on to a different career or whatever, they see an opportunity here and they and they take the opportunity. I hope they do. I hope because it's nothing but good for the game, right? It's it's great for the game, you know. And and, and like I said, his 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 one son is his eldest son that went into the game of basketball, had some health issues and right. I think that kind of stifled his college career and, and we're talking and, about Shaq here, yes. Yeah, which Sharif. Right. Um, and, and I think, you know, he would have made a bigger splash, but now it's all brawny. And of course, right. uh, Shaq has another son coming up, but he also has his daughter now. His daughter. Thank you. His daughter is right here in Gainesville. She's a Gator this year. Thank you very much. That's going to be, be awesome. It's going to be And so maybe she's the next. So maybe she's the next Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, whatever. I don't, I don't know if she's super talented or I don't know that. We'll find out. But she's got a few years to develop and get there. And then yes, his other son Shakir, I think it is, yeah. is just transferred, just transferred to another Florida school. So he's in Florida here too. He went to A uh, and M, the Florida A and M in Tallahassee. So yeah, cool for him. Well, that'll be kind of because you know I'm, I've heard good, good, good things from all three of those mm -hmm. kids when they went in, you know, to college ball. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there. So yes, I hope. To, just to put a just to wrap that story up, I hope that the ladies' game continues to get excellent, fun to watch talent like those two, like Reese and, and Clark. And because I'll keep watching, I'm okay with that. I mean, I think that's great. So, anyway, that's our story, and we're sticking to it. Yeah, dang on it. <laughs> you, you, you take do you take many elevators? I don't take many elevators. No, I, I, I mean, I'm in Gainesville. I mean, no, I. <laughs> No. Well, I'm going to help you through the process if you if you do when we come back. I lived in a big city. I would take more ele elevators. What's elevators yeah. got to do with anything? Or well, you're going to have to wait till after the break. All right. You, you, well. you think I'm going to? You might think I'm going to tell you now, but no, you're going to have to listen and 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 join us after the break. The wait for it. The <laughs> ups and downs of elevators coming next <laughs> to BJ and Bill the podcast. We will be right back. Welcome back. This is BJ and Bill, the podcast, dun, 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 where you can find us. And we would love it if you would leave that five-star review for us wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're on YouTube Music. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio. We're on we're, we're anywhere. Any, oh, and you said Podbean. Anywhere yeah. you find your podcasts, we are there. So uh, so leave that review there. And the only one like we're not on that I, that I know so far is uh, the new station by Beasley Broadcasting. Which uh, plays parts of podcasts. We haven't made it yet because we haven't we haven't delivered our hundred and fifty dollars to them yet. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep mentioning Beasley Broadcasting until they finally say, "Okay, shut these guys up. Let's just play their podcast 
<laughs> and be done with it. I think that's a great idea. I think that is a great idea. We are going to love bomb Beasley Broadcasting until they figure it out. So, I was so just here's an idea. The... What's that? So, so, so you know, if, if you listen to us when we were in Fort Myers. Right. And you're in Fort Myers. Pick up your friendly phone. Call Beasley Broadcasting and say, hey, Beasley Broadcasting, why aren't you airing BJ and Bill, the podcast, on your podcast radio station? We want to know. Perfect. Inquiring minds <laughs> want to know. I think that's. And they'll go, because they ain't giving us $150 yet. That's why we ain't playing them on our podcast radio station. Uh, that's. <laughs> I love that. I love. I I have to listen into that. Did did we ever? Did you ever find out the the call letters or whatever? I guess I could probably just Google it. Yeah. Easily broadcasting podcast radio station Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah, I'll have to do that. I'll. Uh, yeah, we'll check on that and see if we can, <laughs> you know, stir the stir the pot a little more. So anyway, <laughs> all right. So beforehand, BJ made this big deal about elevators, and I don't know where the heck this is going. Up or down. Ha ha. But well, you know me. Out. Yes. I had the heart transplant. And, and, yes. I've, and I've talked many a times. Once you get a transplant, so it doesn't attack and you don't, you know, kick out the organ to your body, you know, have rejection. You know, we take, you know, we, they lower our immune system. It's just part of the process of having a transplanted organ. So I have done this long before this story came out. But do not touch. That elevator button, Bill. Uh, next, what what are we what are we talking about? The next time you ride in an elevator, you may want to wear gloves. A study finds that elevator buttons are filthier than toilet seats. Oh, yum! <laughs> Hygiene experts suggest, and I and I have done this even before I read this article. You should like press with your knuckle. You know, you, see, you know, like a lot of people, you know, take your finger. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like like that. And, and, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, like yeah. the knuckle. Push the knuckle on the on the floor you want to go to. Push that button with your knuckle or the right. back of your hand. Right. And that's a a much much safer way. So so you're saying I should floor. stop? I should stop using my nose. You should. I should yeah, stop you using should my stop nose. Okay. Using, I, I've never, even when I was healthy, I didn't use my nose, Bill. <laughs> I may have used another body part just to show off, but I did use my nose. <laughs> Only BJ would think of that thing, folks. Okay. All right. Good for you. Good. If you can do it, good for you. But yeah. so so elevator buttons, dirtier than a toilet seat, that just creeps and grosses me out. Totally. Totally. And, you know, I can only imagine in a hospital anyway, too. Oh, my God. It's full of sick people. Yeah. I and, mean, you know. Office buildings with doctor's offices? I mean, it really doesn't matter whether it's a doctor's office. I mean, I get it. If it's a doctor's office and I'm coming into the doctor's office to see the doctor and I'm sick, yes, I'm leaving my germs on elevator buttons, door handles, doorknobs, you know, uh, office restroom fixtures, et cetera. I get it. So I, but I never thought of elevator buttons. I never thought of that. So now you're giving me something else to creep me out about this world. Oh yeah. boy. It's just, what else is it? What? And I got to go to the gym later. And you know, you always at the gym. I don't have to, I'm going to go to the gym later. They always have the little, the little sanitary wipes that you wipe off the equipment and stuff with, but it's like, okay, who's used this before me? And did they wipe it off before me? And should I wipe it off before and after? That's a lot of work before and so, after shit. At least, at least that's what they say. That yeah, and uh, more stuff to worry about. Good God, come on, man! I hear you. I hear you. now. You're just giving me a whole other thing to ruin my day. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but but I have done that. I think ever since my transplant, and so is my What's wife. That? My wife and I knuckles both on knuckles on knuckles. elevators. Yeah. And then 90% of the time, of course, now, you know, we, we most of the elevators we take right. are in hospitals or doctor's offices anyway. So, no you know, there's always usually outside the hospital, especially if they have the little squirty squirt sanitizers. So we always Sanitizer. do that right after we get out off the elevator anyway. So 
think we're pretty good. Good idea. It's a very good idea. I hadn't thought of that. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I still we're talking have a to... bottle of that. What's that? Oh, no, go ahead, and then because uh, I, I, I was just going to say, I still have a bottle of I still have a bottle of sanitizer in my car that I use occasionally, but not a lot. But now you're going to make me start using it again, aren't you, boy? Just like the old days, just like well, you know what days. And well, you know what? That's supposedly on the rise here in Florida again. Oh, I, I, I just, I'm over it. I'm, I, I, I understand that things come and go like that, that diseases and stuff come and go with the seasons and all that. But it's like, I'm also a stressed out, over newsed American who just doesn't care about that anymore. It's off my radar. I'm sorry. And I mean, I get it. If I were, if I were BJ Odom and I had to worry about my health a little bit more in a different way, in a serious manner or whatever. I probably would care more, but I just don't. I just it's like I get it. It's out there. You're gonna well, get the, it. We're gonna get the, sick. The only thing I do kind of enjoy about the whole situation, if you can enjoy. say I enjoy it. Yeah. But since my transplant, I have been that person and I wasn't before. Mm. But I mean, I'm the guy now that uses, you know, the the sanitary, you know, wipes and the the sanitary gels and right. you know I, I, I use those now because I, it was before the word you don't like to use COVID. I used it, damn it. We can't we can't say that, yeah. But but before you know that came along, I was already doing what they started preaching for everyone to do. Sure. Because of that. Sure. So sure. I was already there. So I wasn't doing anything that you know, as a, as a transplant patient, I wasn't doing before. And of course, you know, the same thing, my wife, cause she's trying to, you know, protect me. So she was doing all these things before. So when all this came down, it's like, I'm going, duh, nothing I haven't done before. So the rest of us had to catch up to what BJ Odom was yeah. already doing, which is a little scary, but yeah, I get it. I, I, I think the only thing that really irked me though, because I, I believe in them and my hospital believes in them. And even when I first got my transplant long before, you know, what came along, right. But you don't want to say it. Well, I don't, it's not me, but, but, um, um, I was wearing masks if I was in big, you know, areas with lots of people because I was told, especially fresh out of my transplant. Right. So I was wearing masks before masks became a, a political, you know, pendulum. I, 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 I hear you. I, I, I understand your thinking. I think this is one of those things that people say, trust the science. Okay, if you really look at the science of a of a 15 cent paper mask, it does more harm than good. In my opinion, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying this is what I've seen, that it, it doesn't. The virus that we're talking well, about. Let, let's just say, let's just yes. say this. If you're wearing it and your nose is still stuck showing, out of it, yeah, you you ain't getting jack, you know what, out of that mask no. because your nose is still just running around like, well, I got my mouth covered. Well, do you breathe yeah. out your nose, idiot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. So, it. I don't. I. I. I just don't. I just don't accept. I just don't accept the science of that. So that's that's me. That's me. Don't 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 shoot the messenger. It's just what I believe. That's just how I'm living. So, yeah, they they they, they would be spanking you at the transplant center. They would be going probably Bill, whack yeah. whack. It's whack. okay. Whack. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, I to know. me to me, it's not a political issue. It's it's life for someone with a low immune. To me, it's system. not a political issue. To me, it's a science issue. And for everybody who says trust the science, I do trust the science and my science says that's a stupid thing to do it doesn't work so i'm just that's where i'm at that's where i'm at so it's okay it's okay i know if i come to visit bj odom in the hospital i have to wear a mask and i will i'm okay with that <laughs> oh well i better BJ oh, odom and i had lunch what? a I'm couple just, of months ago i'm just gonna get on another sickness just because this one seems to be irritating you i'm gonna see if the other one irritates you <laughs> I know it irritates me, and I've got one. You're going to change from one illness to another? Yeah. 
That's I'm going to teach you a on lesson that one too. Go ahead. I'm going to I'm going to teach you with the science here, Mister Mister Science Guy. But Mr. Science. Now, I've got to get one of these too, and I, I got an appointment to get it all. I got to get an appointment to get the appointment, if that makes sense to you. But I, I have to get an appointment. What are we talking about? Ask me. A, oh, a colon. Yeah, it's where the little a little midget goes up your, you know, and click 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 takes pictures. Click click, then comes out and goes, oh my god, that's a that's a smelly job. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> I, I've, I, well, I don't, yeah, I've managed to avoid that. And people have said, oh, when you turn fifty, I'm like, well, okay, that was fifteen years ago, and I'm still here. I'm still okay. But I, this is a, I, this is what. This is what gets me. Go and ahead. I want to ask you, now this has got nothing to do with science, but I want to ask you if you think people really do this. I read an article that says when people uh -oh. has a, have a colonoscopy. Yes. They, oh, my God. I can't believe I'm saying this. They will write notes on their butt. What? <laughs> what? They will, like... They will Who's write they? I don't I and it has never been me. Let's just say that, people. And of course, you've never gotten a colonoscopy, so you've never right. done that. But they right. say people will So write you're saying, this. wait. So you're saying the nurse or the technician or the whatever that performs this procedure is just gonna write like nice. No, no, ass they're not gonna write my butt. No, oh. but the, the the people that go in. Yeah, I don't know oh, if they're writing little oh, messages oh. and pointing. So I'm going in. So I'm going in for the colonoscopy, and I write myself a note on my butt for the technician to see when I get there. Yeah. What am I going to write? That's, That's what hilarious. I'm wondering too. A, hilarious. B. What am I going to write? What? Like enter here. What am I say? You know, <laughs> enter here. <laughs> you know, be careful. Be careful what you do up there. I don't know. What would you write? What would you write? I wouldn't write it. You pull these things out of thin air and you expect me to have an, an answer for you. And I've never even, I, it, it would have never crossed my mind that that would be something that people would do. But it only goes to prove how crazy people are. But, but now, I get it. I have heard of people doing this. Uh oh. You know, you're going in for some kind of surgery on your arm or your leg or. Or, or you know, right. you have diabetes and you have to have, you know, a foot amputate. I've heard of people saying they when they go into their operating room, they write on their leg, this leg not to be cut. This leg, right. this is the one. I, I have heard that because pe doctors have made that mistake of like, oh, this, you know, just to, you know, throw a name out there. You know, right arm has to be cut off and they cut off the left arm. Okay, great. Yeah. Now you've just totally ruined both arms for that person because the other one's got to go off too. I get it. Yeah. This one, not that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but like you said, what's the message going to be? Enter at your own risk, you know. <laughs> Gates of walk, hell. <laughs> walk, walk softly and carry a small stick, you know. <laughs> All right. All right, BJ Odom. I want you to help me right now because I write show notes about what we talk about every week. How do I phrase this in the show notes? You write a note. <laughs> uh, hey, ask AI. What? Ask AI. AI, ask, how do I word this? Ask AI. AI will come back and go, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I've been around for a long time. Yeah, I Let get me it. See. Oh, my I, God. I, I have AI here on my phone. Hold on. Yes, you do. And what are you going to, well, how will you phrase that? Uh, that's gonna, what I, I want to I, know. I'm going to ask AI some, something here. Hold on. I'm going to write AI, what message should I put on my, should I put on my butt, I guess. Put, oh no! Put not not shout. Put, <laughs> put on. I wish I type faster. <laughs> on my. He's really tight. He's really tight. I know you can't see this, folks, because we're on the Zoom call that we record. But he's actually he's actually typing into his phone. Colon. And he's trying to talk to the I AI. Colonoscopy. C O L O N. 
D O L O N O S C O P Y. I think colonoscopy. Oh, here we go. Here, we'll see what AI, what message. Okay, fine. To prepare for your colonoscopy, your health care provider may ask you to clean your butt thoroughly using special. Well, that's not a message. It's just telling me how to prep. Yeah, see, they did. Yeah, there they're, no, they're not even. Okay, there is no specific message you need to be put on your butt before the procedure. <laughs> Just focus on following your healthcare provider's instructions for preparing for the colonoscopy. See, even even the a even the even artificial intelligence, as smart as it is, did not fall for the BJ Odom prank. So, well, <laughs> you know, though, when I go, because I told you I have to go to an appointment before I go to the appointment. Right. I'm going to say, Doc. Has anybody ever wrote a message on their butt before they before you gave them a colonoscopy? You ask him that. <laughs> you ask my, that. I double dog minds dare want you. To know. I double dog dare you to ask <laughs> that, and then you report back to us how quickly he throws you out of the office. <laughs> okay, that actually came over show prep. It did to talk about that and, and to ask listeners the message. They have put on their butt before a colonoscopy. I, I, that works on a podcast. I don't think you would get away with it. I mean, you would never do that on a radio station, would you? you would you talk like that on a radio? Would you use that question well, as show prep on a radio station? Think of what air? radio stations talk like nowadays. Oh, that's true. If you were on like Howard Stern's show or something like that, I'm bet he's covered it extensively. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> What are we going to do with you? I don't know. I I don't I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm 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 glad you're still, you know, whatever. Thinking along these, you know, important <laughs> thinking of these important questions inquiring minds want to know. No so, kidding. Yeah. But I am. I'm going to, you know, I know I'll probably chicken out, but I I'm going to try to go in there with a brave face and say, "Doc, okay, I just got to ask you this because I do I I, I do radio. I, I do a podcast, and this yeah. actually came up for us to ask our listeners. And so I want to ask you if anyone has ever done this. That that would be, you could get away with that. You could, you know, it's just like, like you said, it's just inquiring minds want to know. It's just, I've heard this. I've heard Is this rumor. True? Can you confirm or deny? <laughs> Have you ever had any messages on anyone's butt before? I, you, how would you, know? you? Okay, so, so now that we've gone down this rabbit hole <laughs> or whatever hole, now that we've gone down this particular hole, <laughs> how would you even do that? How well, would you? You'd have to go, dear. Right. I need this message written on my butt right now because right. I want the doctor at the colonoscopy, right. you know, center t to read it. So get out your sharpie. sharpie. Ouch! <laughs> get out your magic marker because you couldn't Can do it use... in crayon because it would rub yeah. off. Can we use colors too? I mean, I want to use. You the, could use colors. Color markings, you could, yeah. You could like make it draw a target. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is just this has gone from weird to crazy to insane. <laughs> so, okay, good for you. I'm glad I brought it up now. I'm I'm not so sure, but I hope our <laughs> listeners are still with us after all of this. So. Just what you've come to expect from BJ and Bill the podcast, folks. More crazy stuff. Well, well, here's something, because I, I know, you know, you partake in, you know, the dating apps. Yes, I do. Okay. I think I mentioned this. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, take a breath. All right. All right. We're releasing. We're releasing the press past topic. And now we're moving on. So, yes. Thank you. If I had a little, if I had a little button or a, 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 if I had a little sound effect, I would play it now. But okay. I feel better now. I've, I've released that past story. <laughs> Onto dating apps, something because, much more important to me. Yeah, because I know you're on them. I am. This this is a true story. Uh-oh. Something you did not know yesterday, young man. There's a lot I didn't know yesterday, but it's okay. Like people wrote messages. On their butts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I'm ready. So the, the guy who started Match.com, do you use Match.com? I, I have used it many years in the past. I am not using it now. Okay, so the guy who started Match.com made his girlfriend 
family and friends all sign up to increase traffic to the site. Not a bad idea, right? Not um, if you're starting out, you need to have some some people in there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So his girlfriend later divorced him for someone she had met on Match.com. Oh, True story, people. <laughs> True story. <laughs> hey, dear. I want you to like sign up for my new dating app because you know I got to get it off the ground and we got to get people on there. And then sure. two years later, she goes bye bye. I met Mister Wright on your dating app. So, so hey, honey. Um, good news. Your dating app works real well. Bad <laughs> news. I'm leaving you. <laughs> All right. I love that. I mean, I don't love that, but I mean, much better story. Thank you for sharing. So. Yeah, the, the, you know, here's the thing about dating apps. If they really did their job, they'd be out of business. If they really put people together that were perfect for each other, they'd put themselves out of business. Because but then, would they? Because, okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take devil's He's going to push here. back on that. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Because if you go on a dating app, okay? Let's just say you go on match.com just like mm -hmm. his his ex-wife did. And you find the perfect mate. Right. The love of your life. Right. As they say, your soulmate. Oh boy. And you tell people, oh my God, I went on this app. I found the most amazing woman in my life. We are truly in love we are the happiest either one of us has been in years right now if you tell one of your single friends or she tells one of her single friends this sure all of a sudden well damn right look how happy they are right maybe i should try that app referrals are the best business in the world i get it yes you're right you're right. If it worked that well. So, but that's in a perfect world, business wise, in a perfect world, that's how it works. Here's been my experience. And that is that these dating apps are very much like when you were a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh, today I'm having this. Or when you go to Baskin Robbins, 31 different flavors. Today I'm having chocolate mint chip. Oh, it's awesome. It's great. It's wonderful. Tomorrow, I'm tired of chocolate mint chip. I'm having praline pecan instead, and it's the best thing ever. And tomorrow, I'm ready for something new, and I'm having strawberry peaches and cream, and it's the best thing ever. So I think yeah. dating apps have made the dating world miserable in a world because if you don't if you can go with somebody you can have a couple of nice dates but if neither one of you thinks that it's the greatest thing i mean the greatest thing you dump them and you're on to the next person it's just swipe left swipe right whatever and it ain't great but well maybe you if you put a message on your hiney and they read the message you know call back thank you maybe, yes maybe you would say this dating app is working for me <laughs> <laughs> and that, folks, is a callback in the comedy <laughs> business. And yes, you are correct, sir. Maybe if I did. Maybe that's what you're doing wrong, Bill Stevens. <laughs> the next time you go out with one of these new women from a dating app. Sure. Write a little message on your hiney. Right. On the first. Hey, do I bring that up? Do I bring that up on the first date, BJ? Say, or do I wait you, for the second date? Would you like to read this? <laughs> So you're saying first date. You're saying just go right, just yeah, dive go right, right to in. the jugular. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, honey, you'll never guess what I have written on my butt. You want to look? <laughs> yeah, that'll work great. I can't okay. wait till. What, I think next. What is this? Hold on a second. I gotta. Uh oh. Now what's? Let me look at my calendar. Your calendar? Yeah. What do you oh, got? Yeah. You got somewhere to be? You got well, not today, to but I want to see you know when I'm when I'm meeting uh, my your doctor colonoscopy doctor. Uh, oh, yeah, great! On the twentieth, on uh, August twentieth. Oh, August, you got a month yet? Okay, fine. Yes, yeah, so I got a month. I'll report back. I we 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 cannot wait. We are we are sitting on the edge of our seats, waiting in <laughs> anticipation. 
to hear how that appointment goes. I, I don't I don't print very well, so I'm going to have to have my wife write this note anyway. Well, how could you? That was my point. How would you? Here we go. We're back to writing on butts again. <laughs> how <laughs> how would you even do it? Because if you tried to do it in the mirror, it would be backwards. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. I'm right. Yeah. It would be backwards. So unless you. Yeah, I don't. I can't imagine how you would do it. I just. I think you'd have to go to an artiste. What's that? You'd have to go to an artiste. You'd have to go to an artiste. Yeah, uh, just to a tattoo guy or something like that. Or I don't want to tattoo it because what if you want to change? Well, it no, next I mean, time? you 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 wouldn't. Right. I mean, <laughs> here's a whole new side of the business for you tattoo artists. I'm giving this to you for free. Offer temporary washable tattoo messages on various body parts for people when they are going either A, to a doctor's appointment for a colonoscopy or anything else, or B, on a date. <laughs> Hello? Another new form of business for you that you might not have thought of before. You can thank me later. <laughs> we got another couple minutes left, and I, I'm exhausted. I am exhausted from <laughs> laughing so hard, and that's great. That's what... That laughter is the best medicine, BJ Odom. Hasn't your doctor ever told you that? No, they wouldn't tell you that because they're still collecting their fees on you. So, you know, but I believe that though. Absolutely. Because, you know, like everything I've went through, I, I've tried to go through with, you know, laughter and jokes. And a lot of people, well, this isn't, you know, this isn't anything to joke about. But, you know, when you look at it, really, what else can you do? What a great point. What a great point. Point. what else i mean yeah you can bitch and moan and complain sorry for the language but you can do that and it will do absolutely no good absolutely no good for you and it'll make the people around you kind of miserable too yeah or you can th face things with a more positive maybe even humorous attitude and yeah it might even help. It might because it's certainly going to make the world around you better, and that's well, certainly going to help. That's something that that's something that our old friend Vicky Wagner and I have talked about on on our little other podcast, on our personal growth podcast, many times. Laughter is the best medicine. Absolutely true. Well, yeah. I will I will tell you right now that if there's if if I am with a person and they have a needle in their hand that they're going to use on me, huh. I want them to be happy and joyful. And glad about the day instead of right. miserable, sad. And I don't want, I, I definitely don't want to piss them off at me going, I can't believe I got to get this damn needle stuck in me. You, you were the, oh, you, you son of a, and they're going to go, well, I'll teach you. You want, you want, right. you want pain? Here you go, you buddy. Pain? Here's, your, here's your pain. We can, that can be arranged. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I think, I think the happier you make the person with the needle and the knives yes. and the, yes. All the sharp objects, the better things are going to be for you. Take that to your colonoscopy, <laughs> BJ. <laughs> I think I think I know what my message is going to be. Smile and love the world. Have a great day. <laughs> I know this is. A, I can't say that word, can I, on our podcast? I know this is going to be a shitty day. But please enjoy yourself, Doc. <laughs> All right. I think I'm pretty sure we have used that gag to its fullest extent, but okay, good. Oh, it'll be back after the 20th of uh, well, August. Well, yeah, unfortunately, we all have that to look forward to. But <laughs> next week is show number 100. And, yes. And I have no idea what we're doing, but I think at very least, I think at very least we'll probably use the the video recording from the Zoom call um and put it up on on YouTube or something like that so people can finally see who we're you know what we're looking like after those, 25 those, years of being those, off the radio those poor people yeah i know i know I, it ain't great i i already i'm glad they don't have needles <laughs> right oh. right well you know My, one last word is we're talking about you know possibly doing this on YouTube next week Yes. Because it's episode 100. Yes. So Saturday night we had what they call like a little hoedown down to the clubhouse. 
Like oh, at your, at your community. Yes. Yeah. You know, that, you know, everybody brought a dish, you know, it was a potluck, sure. you know, they, they played music and danced and stuff like that. So I don't know if I was sitting low in my chair or what, but you know, one of the ladies, you know, in charge went around and click, 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 you Pictures, know, all yeah. the different tables, you know, yeah. showing, you know, everybody that was at the hoedown. And so they came out on Facebook on our community page and I'm going, oh my God, look at that. I look like this little old man that's like a hundred years old. I go, I've never been this depressed in my entire life. Look how old I look. It was sad. It was sad. I get it. It was sad. I was glad I had no sharp objects when I was looking at that picture. <laughs> or there might not have been a podcast today. Let this let this be a lesson to you, BJ Odom. Get out, get a little exercise, go to the pool, do something today, whatever, or not. But yeah, I, 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 I do. Yes, I often will see a picture of myself and go, "Ooh, ooh, is that what other people see?" <laughs> ooh, so yeah, I get it. I do. All right, all right. We don't want to end on a bummer of a thing here, but so I'm just gonna say, go out, make it a great day. However, that works for you. <laughs> And who knows what'll happen in the world of politics this week. Oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's just, it's, it's just get along people. Can't we all just get along? Is that so hard? The the I... best, the best Facebook post that's going around right now is there's, well, now it's like maybe a guy and a girl instead of two guys, <laughs> but don't let two guys that don't even know your name destroy friendships. So now I guess a, a man and a don't woman, let a guy a, and a girl who doesn't even know your name don't even know you ruin your friendships. I love that. I love that. That's that is so like, good. And sometimes it even comes down to like families, you know, being split and and families and friends and organizations and groups and all of that. And yeah, it's. Don't let people who don't even know your name ruin your friendships. I love that. And, 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 you know, like everybody, I don't, you know, I know that's another political, you know, look at this person. Just, I don't care what you do as long as it doesn't affect me. Right. You, you can go home and do whatever you, well, don't go home and kill people in your house. No, 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 no. But whatever you do, we, we you know, behind, but whatever you're, you're, you do no, behind you're on the right, clothes, you're on the right track. You're absolutely whatever you right do track. behind closed doors. I don't yeah. give a rat's ass. Consenting adults, all of that sort of thing. Yeah, yes. well, yeah. It's not my business. Correct, correct. And I don't want it to be any of my business. You do your own thing, and like you said, keep it on the you know, keep it legal, keep it whatever. I get that, but yeah. Otherwise, do your own thing. Do what makes you happy. That's my favorite line of all time. Do what makes you happy. I mean, you know, within the law. <laughs> and all of that but yeah okay well hopefully that'll right, be the law in florida before too long and, and we can be happy with that too that's a whole nother story all right <laughs> ladies and gentlemen gonna do it for this week i think we've covered it pretty much from head to tail today <laughs> <laughs> y'all have a great week we will see you again and just just try and stay sane out there stay sane stay happy Take care of yourself and your family and your loved ones. And that's plenty. Do that. Yes. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Up until then, just time for BJ Odom to say, see ya. See ya.